Welcome to another journalnow.com high school football video. We are talking with West Forsyth head coach Adrian Snow. I'm Joe Serrera from the Winston-Salem Journal. Coach Snow, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you, Joe, for having us. You guys are unbeaten heading into Friday night's game at Reagan with a team that had to replace a lot of major contributors from last season. What's been the key to your success and, and your ability to replace those guys? You know, at our place, you know, it's, a, it's program-based. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we feel like we, we do a good job uh, with our kids in the sense of, hey, it's the new man. I mean, we've had some guys that we've had to replace defensive, offensive. But our guys have kind of, you know, they, they've stunned it there. And the expectations are always high at West Forsyth. So at the end of the day, uh, the next kid that's going to come in, they're expected to do just as good as the ones in the past. So that's been a positive for us. But, um, you yeah, know, and we've got some seniors at spots that kind of help you out, like at our offensive line. Uh, you know that that makes it a uh, that makes it a little easier when when it comes to that. But uh, our kids have done well. Um, what are you guys doing well right now, and what do you need to work on? Yeah, you know, ultimately, I, I think right now, you know, defensively, we're flying around pretty good. I mean, our kids are playing real; uh, they're playing fast. They're getting after you know. We went against Reynolds last week, and who's really talented on offense and did a lot of good things. Gained a lot of yards, but, you know, we did a good job when we had to blow our backs, we did that. You know, offensively, uh, we've got five out of the six offensive linemen counting our tight end are, are seniors. Uh, so uh, that, that was a, that's been a positive. We've run the ball real well, and we were running for – over 500 yards last week, which is uh, which is nice. Uh, so our kids are doing well there. You know, we're still evolving them comes throwing the ball, but uh, you know, we we did some good things there too. I mean, we we uh, we five eleven. I mean, it's one of those things. At times, we try to throw it just to continue to work on it and try to get better at it. But but our kids are are doing well there too. But uh, again, it's it's a process. It's been a challenging year, obviously, for everyone. Uh, the Titans didn't play a game from March 5th to March 26th because of COVID protocols. How concerned were you about how your team would, would respond and how they play coming out of that long a break? We ultimately talked about uh, at the start of the year, our motto was adapt and overcome. We knew we were going to have to do that uh, with the year we were dealing with. But our kids did well. I mean, they just uh, they understood it. We we followed all the pearls that were set by the school system and the state and the CDC. We followed those, did what we had to do, and when we were ready to play and allowed to play, we played. And that's kind of the way it works, and that's the way we handle it. And uh, it's kind of just uh, no nonsense. Here it is. Uh, we, we don't hide anything from our guys. This is what we got, and we're going to go from there. You've handled it well. Um, the COVID pause means you're only going to be able to play five regular season games instead of seven. Does that change your approach in, in any way to what, the games that you've got? Does it does it make every conference game that much more important for you guys? Uh, ultimately, it does. Everything's a winning percentage. So at the end of the day, you want to kind of be ready. All right, I'm back. I don't know what happened there. You don't with know. Me? We got you, though. Yeah, we'll get a bunch of rain here. But then I think ultimately, you know, you asked about the, you know, question again, Joe. I, I'm, I've got jacked up there. All right, um, you know, how much did it change your approach, the fact that you're only going to be able to play five games and it, and it really <laughs> put greater importance on every conference game? Well, I think right the way the, the way it's set, you know, our league only has six teams, which is crazy. We only get one at large. We only get one bid right. a, in a league that's a it's probably one of the better leagues in the state, if not the better league in the state. From top to bottom, mm -hmm. there are no there are no there are no games. No, and anybody can talk about those other leagues and talk about this league's got there's there's some there's some gimmies in those leagues, and we can talk about it. You, we don't call no names, but in our league, there ain't no gimmies. So guess what? You got to be ready to play. 
So ultimately, you want to win anyway, and that's what you want to do. So that's kind of still the way it is. If you want to win, win out. And that's anybody. So that's where we're at. Yep. You know, we, you were talking about the Central Piedmont 4A uh, on the high school huddle show I've done for a number of years, first with Spencer Turk and then with Dave Pulaski. We've jokingly called it the conference of death, but I mean, it's, you said there's, there's no easy games. We could have a situation because of the, the protocols where you guys finish unbeaten in the conference and East Forsyth finishes unbeaten. And I get, I'm, I'm trying to get an answer from the NCHSA. I guess it's a random draw for uh, who gets uh, the conference champion spot. I do believe that if that's the case, you would both get in but you would draw to see which one would be the, considered the champion for seeding and which one would be in as a wild card. But, I mean, it, it's just such a strange year. I mean, how weird is it going to be to not play East for Scythe? I mean, that, that is such a great game, such a great rivalry for, for you, for Coach Willard, for both programs. It's just strange. You know, for us, I mean, we lost two home games. So you're talking about the financial ramifications of it, too. For yeah. us, I mean, you know, everybody's dealing with that. But, you know, it's one of the, it's it's where we're at. It's you know, We can talk about it. We, we You know, I mean, you can go over what we can do, can't do. But at the end of the day, it's where we're at. And we're going to go on to do the best we can and go from there. If it does come to that, I think what we might do is uh, we might be about hangs about midway. And then me and um, Will might just arm wrestle. We'll kind of <laughs> do one of those things, like best two out of three arm and kind of see what goes on there. I don't know. I, I think I think my weight would probably help me a little bit against it because he's not as big. Uh, so that may be what we do. But I'll tell you what, there's some, you know, the the, the Davy Counties of the world, the Reagans of the world, uh, you know, I think he finishes with Davy and then finishes with Glenn. All those guys got something to say too. So, I mean, we still have a lot, a lot of footballers to play. There's two, two weeks. And, uh, you know, there's still great teams in our league. And you better bring the A game every Friday night. Uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm going straight out. Like I'm going to talk a little bit about just Reagan. Don't, just don't happen. Yep. Just don't happen. Don't go undefeated. I mean, we won it last year. We lost a game to Davy. You know, I mean, so it's like it just doesn't normally happen. This league is a league where basically you finish undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned Reagan. That's the team you're playing Friday night. What do you see from the Raiders on film? And obviously, last week uh, they lose Bryson Canny to an ankle injury, and and that's a huge factor in in their game last week, their loss. But what do you see from them on film? Uh, first of all, uh, up front offensively, they're really big and they're really athletic and do a great job. Uh, and then and then you look at Bryson Canty, who's uh, yeah, he, he's a talent. There's no doubt about it. As I've been blessed to be around him a little bit outside of football, you know, like some of our 707 events and stuff. And ultimately, he's also a great kid. And it's funny that our kids hang with him. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, our kids and their kids, they, they do a lot of stuff together, which is kind of, which makes it fun. I mean, you like, you like beating your friends. There's no doubt. And Josh is the same way with us. We talk all the time. We don't talk during the week, but we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk, you know, beyond this but uh you know he, he's he's a tremendous talent big kid they they made a they made a big time move when they moved into the backfield because mm -hmm. then they changed a lot of things and he got a lot of touch but they you know they got good players there's no doubt that Taze Woods is a good one number two the quarterbacks he's coming on doing some really good things you know and I'm a I'm a I'm a numbers guy like I, I look at numbers I, I don't kind of know names as much you know they got an inside linebacker I think it's Gavin Brandon, to be honest with you. I just mm -hmm. remember who, who is an unbelievable player, too. I mean, so they've got some kids that can play and, and do well. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be well coached. And, uh, you know, right now they're kind of backs against the wall. So at West Side, we know that always Reagan is going to give us their best shot and vice versa. We're going to give them our best shot. So at the end of the day, we just got to be ready to play and, and see what happens, you know. Mm -hmm. You're dropping some of the names for the Reagan guys. Who are some of the guys on your team that, that folks should be watching? I know, obviously, uh, anytime I talk to any any other coaches around the area about your team, the first name they mention is Jared Wilson up front, and and for good reason. Lately, woo, he's 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 been he's had a great year. I've been, you know, he decided to come back because he wanted to play with his buddies and his and his uh, brother. 
uh, which has been good. His brother's a freshman running back for us and does really well. But uh, so it's been good. He, and that, that group of offensive line, like I said, there's five of them up there that that, that are, are seniors that just they just do a great job and they get after it and, and go from there. I mean, they're doing well. Been very pleased with them, you know. And then, you know, for us, you also got you get to talk about our two running backs, Najion Johnson and Javante Long, have done really well for us too. They ran the ball real well. The cool thing about it is in our league, there's a lot of really good backs. You know, there's there's good backs. The good thing that we have, I think, over some of the other guys is like we've got two of them. You know what I'm saying? So we've got so it's not like you know they have to carry it 40 sometimes or 30 sometimes or 20 sometimes. For the most part, they're. You know, hey, if if you're if you winded, come on out. And we're gonna put somebody else in, and, and we feel like we don't drop off very much when we put either one of those guys in. So so we feel confident about it. You know, and then and, and defensively, you know, you, you got to start with uh, Chris Van Cleek, inside linebacker, Mac David inside linebacker. I mean, Mac David is a is a tremendous talent. Both of them are really really good. Chris, we moved down from safety. You know, Jay Kill is our starting free safety. He is one of two seniors that we start on defense. We don't start two seniors on defense. Uh, and Jake is one, you know, and, and uh, Johnny Bird is the other corner uh, that, that start for us the two, of two seniors. And Jake's like literally putting a coach on the field. Like he can tell everybody where to go, when to go, how to go. And uh, so he does a lot of great things. And, yeah, you know, the list goes on. We, we've got – the great thing about being a West Forsyth is we got great youngers. Now, I'm going to tell you that right now. You enjoy coming to work every day because our kids, they make it enjoyable because you enjoy being around them. And, and uh, so it's been fun. And, yeah, like I said, we've had some pauses and stuff like that. The only big major problem with pauses is you don't get to be around them as much. Yep, I hear you. All right. Well, Coach, thank you, as always, for taking the time to talk to us about your team and about the, the matchup this week. Uh, it will be a good one at uh, Reagan on Friday night. And then you guys are going to finish up with Davie County, uh, another team that, you know, is is a strong one in the conference. Glenn beat them early this week in, in a game that took, I guess, uh, three days for them to actually finish it. Multiple days. <laughs> yeah. I told, them, I told them I'd never been part of a game where there's like three or four days in between. Lord of mercy. But they finished. So it was, it was good that they got to do that. Uh, again, thank you for your time. Wish you nothing but luck and uh, look forward to uh, seeing the West Versailles Titans, hopefully in the playoffs. Peace. Thank you, Joe.